Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. This is a travesty getting dirty in the tool set. Okay, well, we are still playing Path of Evil, and we did run into another bug, and this has been a bug that's actually been known for quite a few years now. A lot of people have struggled trying to sort this one out, but it's the uh, dreaded uh, associates not transitioning with the party bug. So, as you can see, an associate... Let me explain what an associate is. In Neverwinter terms, associates are animal companions, familiars, summoned creatures, and... what else am I looking for? Henchmen. Those are associates with regard to scripting and stuff, at least in this game. So, But let me show you what I'm talking about. Oh, and I want to give a, a shout-out to uh, the guy who reminded me of this issue, and that was uh, the Poning Atheist who brought this to my attention. Yeah, I, I knew about this issue, and I just kind of forgot about it because I looked at it years ago, and I couldn't figure out what it is, but now that I have a little bit more experience in the tool set, like I said, I think I, I, think I can sort this one out. So let me show you what I'm talking about. As you can see, we do have our uh, animal companion with us, this bear. We're going to go through this transition and you'll notice that he will not do a complete transition. And this is, we can re replicate this. So let's go through. Alright, we just went through this transition and as you can see there's no bear with us. And if you look close at his uh, icon over here, you see his hit point bar is like all blacked out. And if you look, bring up the map, you'll notice there's like a, a icon way up here up to the left hand corner. That gives you an idea that it did not, that bear did not do a complete transition and didn't come with us. Now the only way to get around that, to be honest, is uh, your going to the master and then uh, resummon your animal companion and bring him back with you. Now if you look on the map, that icon is no longer up there in the upper left hand corner because now it just did a complete transition. Hmm. Now I'm pretty what? sure I know what is causing that issue. Now, I'm almost going to guarantee this, as soon as we go through this transition and go back to the beggar's nest this bear will not follow us through and I, I'll, I'll show you why once we get in the uh, tool set. Let's go through this transition one more time. Bam. Sure enough. It's predictable now. I think I figured this out. Yep, there's no bear with us and as you can see his hit point bar is blackened and if you look at the map there the icon is up in the upper left hand corner again. And that's not just Path of Evil. That's not this mod. I've seen this issue in lots of mods. And just let's just confirm it. Let's go through again. Let's uh, yes. Uh, let's reload actually. All right. Now let's do a confirmation. Here we are. We have the bear with us, animal companion. Let's go through again. And as you can see, we just replicated the same issue again. Now this time I'm not going to resummon that bear. Let's take a look at the map. Yeah, the icon is up there in the left and it's definitely not... It, it did not do a complete transition. Let's go back it, over to the nest. And there you see, the bear is back here. It's, it's like it, it stays back at the spot where it was last. So like I said, it didn't do a complete transition at all. Now let's go through one more time just to see if it'll replicate again. There you go, no bear. If you look at the map. There it is up in the upper left hand corner again. Alright, let's go right back through. Alright, and there's Mr. Bear. Okay, so, like I said, I'm pretty sure I know what the hell causes it, but back in the day, this almost appeared random, and I'm going to show you why it appears random, because this depends on who you're actually controlling, I've discovered, too. Right now, after all those tests I just did, I was controlling my main character. Now, let's control the master of this animal companion. The master is the person who summoned it. So the owner of this is essentially what I'm talking about. This animal companion belongs yes. to Tan, who is our ranger, who did his uh, summon animal companion. Now let's control him. And watch this, you're going to be kind of confused as to what's going on. I'm controlling Tan. Now let's go through this transition. Wow, there's the bear this time with us. That is pretty damn confusing, isn't it? Now, let's confirm that. Let's see if we can replicate it. Let's go back to the nest. And there's a bear still with us. As you can see, I'm still I'm still controlling Tan, our companion right here. Now, this is true for familiars and henchmen and summoned creatures as well. Now, let's confirm it one more time. I'm still in control of Tan. Let's go back again. All right, yep, the bear is still with us. Okay, now let's go back. 
Okay, and we still have the bear with us. Now, let's test another theory. Let's control one of our other companions who is who's not the master of this beast. So we're going to control in this particular situation. We're going to contr control Kvass this time. Now, watch this as we go through with him. Wow, no bear. Let's take a look at the map. Yep, there's the icon up in the upper left-hand corner again. Not a full transition, and his hit point bar is blackened out. So let's go back through. I'm still in control of Kavas, one of our other companions. And there's the bear. So as you can see, those associates will only transition with you if you're controlling the master of the associate. So, I'm pretty sure I know what's causing this issue. So, let's go into the tool set and I'm going to show you what's going on. And just for a little frame of reference here on the map, in the beggar's nest, we're up here at this northern gate right here. Now, while, actually, while we're here, before we go into the tool set, let's go check this transition down here, too, because there's something over here I, I found out, too. I'll see you over there at that docks transition. And... All right, here we now are over here by the docks district. This one's over here on the east side. Now, this transition, I know, is a little bit different than that transition we were just at up here, the one that goes into the graveyard. I'm going to show you this. Let's do some tests. I'm currently in control of my main character. Now let's go through. We do have the animal companion with us. Let's go through this transition. Now as you can see on this one, the bear is with us. Okay, let's confirm that. Let's go back. Alright, bear is still with us. Now let's grab Kvass, yes. the unmastered companion. Let's go through with him and see if the bear transitions. Yep, the bear came through again. All right, let's go back. We still have control of Kavas. Now, let's test All with in. Tan. He is the master of that associate bear. Let's have him go through. Well, he's in control. Well, we have him in control, I should say. All right, the bear's still with us. So, that bear transitioned with us 100% of the time. Let's go back. And there we have the bear with us. So, if we can transition 100% of the time with all of our associates through this transition, why could we not do the same with this transition up here in the north that was going to the graveyard? And like I said, I pretty much have the solution for this. So let's go into the tool set and investigate a little bit deeper here. All right, here we are in the tool set. We are in the Path of Evil intro module. And I pulled up two areas. I brought up Beggar's Nest, which is pull one nest. And I brought up the graveyard as well because... Uh, the transition in question is the one that's moving between these two areas, so I'm going to bring them both up so I can show you some other things. Now, as you can see, once again, you have all these uh, purple and orange spheres here. These are light spheres and sound spheres. And let's get those out of the way. Come up here to your show hide area right here, and let's uncheck light spheres, and then come back over here to uncheck sounds so you can see a little bit of something without them things blocking our view. All right, the transition that we were discussing is this one up here to the north. It's right here, going through this gate. The transition is not actually this door. The transition is this trigger that's right down here. Now, this door is kind of blocking our view, so let's go up here to show hide again. And now let's uncheck doors so it hides all the doors. There you go. So now you can see this trigger is actually the transition. Now in game this will show up as like that that blue disc that you see on transition areas, okay? And it's as wide as the widest point of this trigger. Yeah, as you can see this trigger is like a rectangle, but you're going to see in game a, a circle just as wide from this end to this end. So the longest area, that's how big that circle is going to be as far as the radius goes. Now you can probably tell it's going to be a trigger if you look at it. When you click on it, you look at its properties, you might see something in here talking about, you know, transitions or something like that but for sure to know if it's a transition you're going to see this property down here all these uh, three transition properties one called link object type and then linked to and then party transition these are the three you should see for sure now let's start from the top this link object type property as you can see this transition says no transition that might tip you off hmm that might be a problem but I'll tell you right now that's not the problem on these trigger type transitions, it doesn't matter what this says. If you look over here, when you have this property clicked, you got this drop down area, click on that. You're going to see you have three different options here. No transition, transition to a door, and then transition to a waypoint. 
The only one that really kind of matters, I think, is this transition to a door. If it does transition to a door, it'll cause that receiving door to actually animate into an open position. I think that's the only reason that, that's the only one that might have some effect on this. But in, other than that, this, because of the fact that it says no transition here, it doesn't mean anything. It's still going to work as long as in the next property, in link to property, as long as there is a tag in here, this transition will always try to jump your party to that tag, no matter what, no matter what it says up here, and then link object type. What this tag is 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 nine times out of ten for a trigger transition like this, it's always going to go to something called a waypoint. And waypoints are these things right here, these little yellow triangle th things with a white flag on them. Those are all waypoints. Now, if we click on this again, and you can see the link to property says two underscore graveyard. That's the tag of a waypoint in the graveyard area, and that's why I brought up the graveyard area so I can show you what I'm talking about. If we go to the graveyard area, let's zoom in on it. And nine times out of ten, the waypoint is going to be somewhere near the entrance area, like or near a door or something like that. And like I said, we had the doors hidden, so let's bring them back up so you can see what I'm talking about. There's this big gate right here coming into the graveyard area. So let's go ahead and hide the doors again so we can see these triggers a little bit better. Yeah, now on this side, this is... Well, let's see if I can click on it. Sometimes they're difficult to click on. If you kind of make a box like that, you can select these uh, triggers. Sometimes they're a little bit of a pain in the ass to uh, select. Oh, another thing while we're on that subject, sometimes these triggers are kind of hidden under the ground. If you come up here, there is one called wireframe. If you click that, at, it makes everything in wireframe, and you can always see the triggers, even if they're underground. So that's a nice little handy tool if you're having trouble trying to find some of these triggers, or you're trying to find a corner that might be hidden under a ground, or behind an object or something like that. Go to wireframe, that way you can see where they actually are. And just bring it back. Okay, anyways, let's go back to what we were talking about as far as waypoints. So look around somewhere where the entry area, I'm, well, I know it's already this one, but if you click on this waypoint right here, and if you look, they, all of these objects always have tags. That's what specifically identifies these objects. And this particular object is a waypoint object. So if you look over here in the properties, you're going to see a tag area, and that's its tag right there. As you can see, it says 2 under, underscore graveyard. And like I said, that should match up with the transition on this side linked to as you can see, it also says two graveyards. So that means if once you activate this transition, it's going to jump your party to this waypoint. Okay, so that's what that means. As if this is empty, this transition is not even going to work at all. And regardless if if regardless if this says transition to a door or transition to a waypoint, this won't work at all if this is blank. If there is a tag here, though, it'll always try to work no matter what this says up here in link object type. Now, like I said, this is for trigger type transitions. Now, for a door transi transition, it's a little bit different. This does matter on a door, so just so you're aware of that. Now, the third property, you can see party transition, and there's a question mark. It says false right here. I'll tell you right now, that is what's causing our problem because of the fact this is set to false. In single player games, that is. In single player games, these should always be set to true. Because this will that means it will transition everybody, including all of your associates, no matter who you have select, who, who you have in control in game. Now, this can cause problems in multiplayer games. I'm not a multiplayer expert. I don't know a whole lot about multiplayer games, but I can tell you right now, this could potentially cause an issue. For example, if you're uh, in a multiplayer game, that is, if you're in a multiplayer game and you and your buddy, let's say you're over here messing around with this transition, but your buddy, he might be in a conversation somewhere, or he might be in a store, or he might be maybe disarming a trap, or opening up a chest, or doing something. If you come over here and you hit this transition in a multiplayer game, and this is set to party transition true it's gonna kick him out of kick your buddy out of whatever he was doing and potentially wreck a quest or you you know screw something up it could potentially lock the game up or something like that or cause a 
a crash. I don't know. Maybe some of you guys that know a lot about multiplayer games might be able to confirm that, but that could potentially be a problem in multiplayer games. But for single player games, in my humble opinion, these should always be set to true to prevent these issues. Now, in multiplayer games, to avoid this problem, I would guess most multiplayer guys have a script up in this on click event handler up here that actually controls all this business so you don't run into these problems so you don't have to rely on this party transition flag right here being true or false but specifically for single player games I think all of these should always be set to true to prevent the problems that we're trying to fix right now so there's actually two ways to fix this particular issue obviously the, f the one way that you can fix it is to go through every one of these and set it to true and then save your game or save this area and then be done with it but damn look at this I got a ton of areas here how m do I have to go through every one of these damn ones and set it well if you're the if you're the mod author probably yeah you're gonna have to go through every one of these and check them to make sure they're all set to true and speaking of that let's look at this one down here remember we did the test earlier in this video this is the transition that goes over to the docks let's take a look at this one and compare the two now you can see this one's already set to true. That's why it worked all the time. It worked 100% for us all the time. As you can also see, this one says transition to a, transition to a waypoint. Like I said, that doesn't matter on a on a uh, trigger type uh, way, uh, transition like this. So that's why this one worked so well because of the fact that this party transition flag is set to true that's the way it's supposed to be now there is a third transition over here that goes over to the Academy too let's take a look at this one we didn't really test this one but let's see how this one is set up yeah this one's also set to true so this one should work and you notice this one also says transition transition to a waypoint so this one's actually pretty damn good but like I said don't worry about this part that says transition to a waypoint this one can be set to no transition and it'll still work as long as there is a tag in this linked to property all right so let's test this like I said there's two ways to fix this the second way is fixing it through script I don't want to get into that just yet I'll come back to that in a minute I want to show you something else about fixing this if let's go ahead and set this to true now let's say I wanted to fix this and I wanted to be able to test this to see if it works there's a way to do this normally you wouldn't be able to do this because these uh, area files should always stay in your modules folder and because of the fact that anything in the module folder is not going to be save game compatible but I really want to test this because I had a load I want to be able to load a game up and test it to see if it works there is a way to do it and I'm going to show you how to do that whenever you make a change to these areas right here you can either you know right click on us and hit close and then close it out and save it or you can come up here to file and save it or you can use the save current view which is also control shift s and I discussed this in an earlier video so we're just gonna save it for now uh, actually before we do that I wanna show you something else open up your file go into your modules folder and open up your Poe intro folder I wanna show you something now notice the name of this area is Poe 1 underscore nest let's look for that scroll all the way down here Poe 1 underscore nest I want to show you the actual area files that we're going to be dealing with. Here they are. Every area always has five files. There's an ARE file, and I'm going to call them ARE. And there's a GIC, I'm going to call it GIC. And there's a GIT, called, I'm going to call it GIT. There's a TRN, we're going to call that TRANS. And there's another one called TRX, we're going to call that TRACKS. Every area has all five of these files. Okay. This makes up a whole area right here. And this is in your module folder. Okay. Now, look at the date modified. All these say 2017, and this tracks one is back down to 2010. So you know these are older. When uh, Kamal saved these files, he saved it back in 2017. Now, let's take a look at something. Let's close out of that. I'm going to come up here, and while this area is selected, let's go up here and let's do the save current view. Okay, that's going to save that area, and as you can see, it just paused for a little bit. That means it saves something. So now let's go back into there and let's look for that same area. Go into your modules folder, go into PO intro, because that's the folder we're in, remember, PO intro. Now let's go back down to that same one. Here they are, all five of them. Now look at the dates on these. 
you'll see the area, the GIC, and the GIT are now 2021. But the trans and the tracks file are still the old ones, which means they didn't bother to save because we only changed properties. If you start changing like objects and uh, walk meshes and stuff in here, if you save this again, it'll save the trans file and the tracks file too. Now, as you can see, those files are pretty damn big. Now, for for sake of making patches, the only thing you really have to be concerned with are these three, because those are the only three that we just changed by fixing that. Okay? You don't need this trans file and this tracks file because those didn't get updated. So we don't need to mess with that. The only ones we need to move or copy and paste are these now. And I'm going to show you why we're going to copy and paste these because I want to test this. So select the area file, the git file, and the git file because those are the only three ones we just saved. And we're going to right click on it. We're going to go copy. Now open up your override folder and paste those. Now this can be dangerous doing this like this. This is only for testing purposes only. If you do this and you go in this area multiple times, it'll reset the area as if you were never in it before. So let's say, for example, you disarm traps or you open chests and uh, looted a bunch of stuff or you killed monsters or you had a conversation with somebody and got a quest or something like that. If you leave the area and then come right back in while these are still and while these area files are still in your override, it'll reset the area as if you were never there. So keep that in mind. Only do this for testing purposes. Only for testing purposes. When you're done testing, remove these out of your override because you're going to screw your game up for sure. Okay? But I'm going to only do this for testing purposes because I want to be able to load my game up and see if this fixed uh, took effect. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to go into game. I'll be right back. Okay, here we are. And I just loaded my game where I last saved at right outside here. So, now that we made that fix to that, to that transition right here, remember how I was saying it's, a, it's this blue little disc thing? In the tool set, all it is is a trigger, and, it, and this blue disc thing is as wide as a trigger. That's why it's this big circle right here. So now that we made that fixed, let's open a store, get it out of the way so we can see something. Now, let's click on it, and let's see if that bear will now follow us through into the graveyard. Yep, there he is. See that? See what I'm talking about? That one flag being set to false is what's causing this problem. Now, let's go back and make sure this is actually working. Okay, now you notice there's no bear here. It's like I said, it resets. It resets everything as if there was nothing changed. Okay? There's nothing changed on here. That's why there's no bear with us now. Okay, now just to test something yes. else. Let's go back to Tan. Let's resummon our animal Rain. companion so we got it with us again. Now, this time I'm going to have Tan selected. Let's go through the trend. Well, actually, you know what? Let's go yes. with Kvass first. I want to make sure it's still going to work with a non-master companion. Let's go through. Okay, as you can see, it does work before it did not so we know that flag is is good to go and we knew it was gonna work with tan if we had Your tan command. selected it still bring him through because like we tested earlier in the video he is the master of that animal companion so that anim animal companion is gonna transition with his master if you had control of your master as you transitioned <laughs> alright so let's go back into the tool set okay back in the tool set so now I just showed you how you can fix that by editing the uh, trigger itself here in area. But like I said, it, since these area files are supposed to stay in the module folder, that means they're not save game compatible. So if you make these changes like that, you pretty much have to start your game over and start from from the beginning for these changes to to, to take effect. But like I said, there's a second way to do this and that is through script. So before I show you what's going on with the scripts, let's set everything back to where it was. Let's go back to this uh, trigger right here and let's set this back to false as if it still broke. And we're gonna save it. So let's come up here. Let's go save current view. And don't forget, like I said, when you're done 
messing around with stuff in the override, get rid of those area files out of your override so that it doesn't cause you problems because if they're still left in the override, you're going to screw all kinds of junk up. So let's get rid of these. We're just going to delete them. We don't need them no more. Let's get rid of those. All right, now, in earlier versions of Path of Evil, this game had some really bad bugs with door transitions, and I like to call that, that bug the... Uh, the the black void on transition bug where if you were controlling a companion and you went into a through a door there was a very high chance that you would all of a sudden end up in some black space and you couldn't do anything you couldn't move or anything it was everything was black in the area the only way to recover from it was to do a reload that's the black void on transition bug but there's a script now in path of evil that fixes that so you shouldn't run into that problem at all within this within path of evil the name of that script is Determined Quest Path, and I want to show you that. Let's go up. If you have a power bar, you can come up here to Script, come up here to Open, and it's going to be a campaign file, so set this type to Campaign. And let's just do a filter for Determine. Yeah, the one we're looking for is Determined Quest Path. Let's double-click on that and open up. That's, this is that script. Now, I already made edits to this to include those trigger transitions so this uh, particular script is actually in the uh, unofficial patch right now so if you download it this will be in it but this technically is not save game compatible you still have to start a new game but I'm gonna show you here in a little bit how you can actually run this script through a console while in game so you can fix this stuff on the fly so you don't have to worry about these transitions now this only affects the intro module at the moment. I still want to go through the other modules to see if there is issues like these bad transitions in the other modules but yeah, I want to do baby steps here. I don't want to do everything in mass here. I want to check everything and make sure everything is still legit. So this will only affect the po intro module at the moment. So like I said this one is called determined quest path and I'm not going to show you what all this stuff means because I could spend hours probably explaining what everything in this script right here means. It, it's actually a really simple script, but for somebody who's never done scripting before, this is probably going to be all gibberish. You're not going to understand what this means, but what it, essentially what this is doing, it's checking every object in all the areas within this module, and it's checking it if it's a door or if it's a trigger that has a transition target. Now when, I'm, when I say transition target, I'm talking about this right here. This part that says linked to, that is the target transition point. That's the waypoint. That means it's got a transition target. So if this is blank, it's going to ignore that. So that means it's only going to, it's going to check every object in here, but it's not, you know, something like this. This is not a transition object. This is a wall, you know, that's not going to have a transition object on it. So it's going to check every one of these objects, and if it has a transition target like this, which is either a trigger type transition or a door, and then the next thing it's going to check is if you see this part that says get is party transition, that's referring to this part right here, the tr party transition. What it's looking for, and you'll see there's this there's an exclamation point here that's also called a bang in coding terms in, in Neverwinter script when there's a bang in a bang in front of a function that means is not so as you can see get is party transition with that bang in front of it essentially what it's saying get is not party transition and the object it's looking for is that particular tr uh, trigger or the door so essentially what that's saying is if if this party transition is set to false and there is a linked to object in there it's gonna it's gonna add a script called door trans onto an event handler <laughs> which is this on click event event handler right here and it's gonna essentially when you click on that object now it's gonna kinda bypass this stuff and it's gonna default to the script called door trans and let me bring that up if you got power bar you can click on this door trans name right here and just hit control B and it'll automatically bring that script up so let's hit control B bam 
that's the door transcript and this is exactly what it's going to do it's going to jump the party to the transition target your entire party that's exactly what it's going to do so as soon as you click on that that transition right there it's going to fire this door transcript which is going to jump your party right to the transition target like i said the transition the transition target is this waypoint with this tag to graveyard okay i hope everybody understands what i'm saying like i said this stuff can get really really confusing so i'm not going to go too much into this so let's close this out and like i said this is already updated to include that so now the next thing what i'm going to do let's close out of this and we don't need to be in graveyard no more so let's just close out of that and i don't want to save it now the next thing i'm going to do let's remember i set it all back to false so it's as if we never fixed anything i set this to false and i saved it and i removed those files out of my override so when i I'm going to go back in the game now and I'm going to reload it to where we were right here and you'll see it's still broke but I'm going to show you how we can fix that now that we have that script we're going to fix it through a console command alright I'll see you in game alright here we are back in game now as like I said and I showed you in the tool set I set everything back to where it was so this is actually technically still broke so if I go through this transition right now Margo our bear should not transition with us so let's test that just to make sure let's go through this transition I currently have my main character selected let's go through now as you can see yeah the bear is not with us if we look at the map yeah you'll see this uh, blue triangle up here that's his icon up here so we know it's still it's still jacked right now until we get this uh, script fired up so let's go back all right there's a bear back with us again now I just want to make sure of something let's go to Kavas now and let's go through again Okay, as you can see, there's no bear with us. So, yeah, this thing is, is still got the uh, transition bug going on. So let's go back. Okay, now we're back, and we have the bear with us again. Now, like I said, that script is fixed, and it should be in the campaign folder. If you uh, download it and like that, you should be good to go. Now, here's how you fix this on the fly. You do this by going into console. We're going to hit the tilde key to bring up your console. We're going to type debug mode space one. That's all one word, and it's space one. Okay. Now you're going to see this little message saying uh, toggle request sent to the server, so you know you're in debug mode and all that stuff like that. All right, now we're going to type RS, which is short for run script. We're going to type RS and then space. And remember, the name of that script that we were talking about was called determine quest path. That's the script we're going to type in. So determine underscore quest path all right no spaces in there so determine underscore quest path and then hit enter now you're gonna see uh, uh you see all these messages down here that's some debug information i put in that script you won't see that in the one that's in the unofficial patch i only put it in this one so i can see what kind of things are getting fixed you should see some kind of uh message in your uh, console window saying successful execution of determined quest path blah 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 Okay, that means the qu that uh, that script just fired and it just fixed a bunch of stuff. Okay, I'm not going to kind of get into the mumbo jumbo part of it, but trust me when I say it fixed a lot of stuff. <laughs> now, all we're going to do is type debug mode space zero to get out of debug mode. And if you just hit the up arrow key, it'll go up through any other, uh, it'll store uh, any kind of... Uh, uh, commands you typed into the console window so you if you hit the up and down arrow it'll scroll through all those so just scroll up go to debug mode and hit backspace and then type zero for debug mode space zero and that'll get you out of debug mode and then hit your tilde key to get rid of the console now if you look down here in this message window as I said there's a lot of debug messages I put in here this just fixed a bunch of doors and it fixed some triggers as you can see there's one that says trigger to nest Another trigger that says to Academy, and another trigger down here that says to Crips. To, yeah, to the Crips. This script essentially checked every object in every area within this whole Poe intro module and fixed every door and all the triggers that actually have a transition to them. That's exactly what it did. So that means this, tra this transition up here should now be fixed, and we're going to test it. Alright, so let's come up here. 
Let's go to our main character first. I now have him selected. Let's now go through this transition. And there you go. The bear is with us. See, like I said, almost everything can be fixed through script. Almost everything. <laughs> so let's go back and let's test it again. Alright, now this time, let's have Kavas. Let's take control of him and let's make sure it works while we have a companion con under control. Alright, let's get... And there you go, he's good to go. Everything's fixed. I know, that was a lot of information I just threw at you guys and, and there was a whole hell of a lot of stuff I could have told you about scripts. But damn, I'm going to tell you, it's, it's really confusing unless you start off with easy scripts. If you try to take on advanced stuff, you, you're going to get really confused. Maybe we'll get lucky and we'll find some easy script and, and I'll show you how you can kind of get into scripting and fix all that stuff. But yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to kind of keep you away from it for now so it's not so damn confusing. I did leave a uh, link to a cool little... Uh, well, actually, I'll show you. Let's, let's get out of here. Let's go through here again. All right, here we are back in the tool set. Yeah, in the description below, I'll leave you a link to a nice little basic tutorial on some scripting. And I'll bring it up right here. It'll bring you to the forums at the Neverwinter Vault. And this is a little tutorial made by Kevel. So thank you, Kevel, for making this. Because I actually refer to this every once in a while because sometimes I forget a couple things. But this, I found, is to be really valuable. This is really simple. It's to the point. And there's no mumbo jumbo in it, you know, making all this stuff look fancy. It just tells you the basics, you know. It tells you all the stuff you really need to know about about scripting. Now, it's the basic stuff, like I said, as far as advanced scripting and, and all the functions and stuff that go along with all these other, you know, advanced scripts that you can make. No, it doesn't go into that. But at least it gets you started in the right direction. And it tells you a lot of stuff here. This is really good, so yeah, use that. There's a lot of other tutorials out there, but some of them are, I don't know, they're they're way too complicated, and they're, I don't know, they're all too fancy. Just keep it simple. There's this acronym out there called KISS, K-I-S-S. -S. Keep it simple, stupid, is what that means. I'm not calling anybody stupid, but when it comes to scripting, you want to try to learn anything about scripting, keep it simple. Start off with baby steps. Learn all the small stuff first so you know what all this stuff is and what it all means and stuff like that. But like I said, this is this is nothing compared to advanced scripting. There's a lot of stuff that can get you like completely lost in scripting. But I'm not going to get into that at the moment. So, anyways, guys, I hope you learned a little bit of something and uh, uh, how to fix all this stuff and all this stuff. Maybe will get you a little bit more further into learning how to use this tool set and hell, even starting to get into scripting and all that stuff. So. I'm sorry if I'm confusing you even more. <laughs> like I said, I don't think I communicate very well. I, may, I maybe stutter and say wrong things every once in a while. But anyways, I hope you guys are enjoying some of these uh, little tutorials of us getting dirty in the tool set.